Dear viewers, welcome again. In the recent times, alternate investment funds are gaining a lot of interest. The field is growing and it is creating a lot of curiosity amongst prospective investors. In this episode, I am going to talk to Mr. Akhil Chaturvedi, Director and Chief Business Officer of Motilal Oswal AMC to take you through this exciting world of alternate investment fund. If you are a person who has an interest to invest through alternate investment funds, you should watch this episode till the end lot of finer points about this investment opportunity this is nra money clinic for you and i am dr chandra khan but your financial guide for a happy living nri money clinic no hype just the right advice dear viewers to talk about the alternate investment funds i have requested Uh, Mr. Akhil Chaturvedi, Chief Business Officer at Motilal Oswal, to be present for this edition of Expert Speaks. Uh, Mr. Akhil Chaturvedi has been working there as the Chief Business Officer. Motilal Oswal is a very reputed AMC. It handles more than 60,000 crore rupees under various segments of PMS, mutual funds, and alternate investment funds. Uh, welcome to this episode of expert speaks mr akhil chaturvedi thank you thank you mr bhat thank you for having me over uh, look forward to the talk uh, mr chaturvedi our audience is primarily an nri community uh, they have a lot of interest in various investment avenues in india india is making noises all over the world today uh, because it is growing uh, much better than any other country in the world uh, this is an educative video can you for the benefit of my community of nris briefly tell what are alternate investment funds right mr but so uh, alternate investment funds uh, you know just like mutual funds and uh, portfolio management services is another license which is uh, given by the regulator in this case it is sebi which uh, allows uh, investment managers or fund managers to create very sophisticated high end alternate products in broadly three categories right so there is a alternate investment fund category 1 there is a category 2 and there is category 3 okay so now for those investors who are wanting to put money into let's say uh, venture funds or startup funds then uh, sebi allows you to do that under the aif category 1 regulations so all the venture capital funds essentially are launched in the category 1 option then you have aif category 2 which is for private equity and real estate funds so for those fund managers who uh, design products for to invest in the unlisted space or in the real estate space then the category 2 uh, is open for that and then we have category 3 in which there are uh, uh, two components of products one you can do pure plain vanilla uh, long only listed uh, equities and the other thing you can do is uh, the uh, long shot funds uh, as a second part which basically uses some part of allocation in long only portfolio and some part is used for hedging and uh, other strategies so that way there are uh, these uh, three categories which are available now before these uh, regulation this regulation or this uh, new category ai have got created in 2012 now before 2012 uh, you know most of these kind of products were managed under uh, vaguely defined uh, legal structures uh, you know some organized businesses were using the trust structure but uh, a lot of unorganized players were there in this space not regulated well and as i told you these are very uh, boutique high end products very sophisticated products complex products uh, so therefore the regulator in the interest of the investors bought in uh, this category of uh, products to be managed under uh, uh, this third license which is the alternate investment fund license uh, such that they are well regulated and uh, the right disclosures are made to the investors right category of products are managed in the right category of the uh, license and uh, uh, actual interest of uh, investors is protected even though they are investing in uh, high end sophisticated uh, boutique products so so that way uh, this category got created and uh, obviously in the last few years uh, there is a lot of interest like you rightly said amongst investors to expand their uh, their universe of products uh, you know different asset classes and this is a very very good safe and sound structure 
to participate whether you do it in india or whether you uh, come from out of india this is a good category to now come in without any uh, hesitation so that's a brief thing about what ais are all about uh, mr chaturvedi the alternative investment funds you mentioned is it for each and every one or is it for a specific category of people these funds are are there any threshold limits are there a specific category of people or institution who can invest in it or is it open for everyone you know so like i said these are uh, high end sophisticated complex products uh, therefore it is not open for uh, uh, everyone to invest essentially uh, this is designed for uh, high net worth uh, investors anybody who's uh, beyond high net worth family offices institutions you know super hnis so uh, the minimum threshold to invest in any alternate investment fund is a uh, minimum of uh, 1 crore rupees and uh, therefore obviously uh, retail investors would find it difficult to invest in uh, aif kind of products and uh, while the minimum is 1 crore threshold for uh, for investors to come in but uh, most of the manufacturers actually tend to keep higher thresholds on their own so regulation tells you minimum 1 crore but uh, what i have seen uh, many manufacturers who have kept 2 and a half crores or 5 crores as minimum ticket size because they want to avoid they only want to cater to a certain set of investors who are savvy who understand risk uh, you know uh, completely aligned with the interest or the strategy of the fund manager so while the minimum threshold is one i have seen many operators actually uh, asking for minimum threshold much much more Uh, higher uh, than the minimum threshold or uh, you mentioned that the afs are complex uh, product how does the regulations work around this what is that as a general public or an investor we need to know uh, from the point of view of regulations while selecting or while investing uh, what does the regulations actually uh, restrict or put boundary conditions on the first uh, comfort comes that these products are regulated by the regulator so that is the first comfort itself all the products uh, under various category of aifs need to be filed the ppm the privately placed uh, memorandum or because these are privately placed products these products cannot be mass marketed these products unlike mutual funds cannot be put up on social media or websites these are products uh, because they are complex because they are high end because they are boutique needs to be explained to investors in person privately and then the agreement happens right so the first comfort itself comes that the product uh, which is defined by the manufacturer through the ppm which is privately placed memorandum or privately placed document the ppm defines what the product will actually be what will be the terms and conditions what will be the objective of the fund what will be the theme of the fund what will be the liquidity aspects of the fund uh what kind of uh, asset classes is the fund going to invest in yeah. what will be the lock in period what will be the exit loads what will be the fee structures everything end to end is defined by the fund manager okay. that's how it is different from a mutual fund that ppm whatever you have defined is then submitted to the regulator sebi and if uh, they find everything in line with their thoughts and all disclosures are made then only they allow uh, or they give approval for the fund manager to launch that product so whatever is defined in the ppm it is like everything is crystal clear in that right and then it is sub- like a mutual fund it is subject to approval any amendment which has to be done in the ppm again is filed with the regulator so you cannot do anything unless the regulator has put a stamp on it okay right. but they have given broad guidelines like i explained to you that in the category 1 uh it has to be venture capital fund so early stage uh let's say there's a fund manager who wants to buy early stage companies uh startup companies or companies which have just gone into operations one two three years and looking at uh, uh, uh capital to grow their business right so so there are uh, there are different regulations uh, for category 1 in category 2 like i said it is uh basically to invest in uh private equity or uh, growth growth stage of uh, the company right so that is a category or real estate uh, so there are different regulations 
uh, they have defined how much has to be unlisted, how much has to be listed and variety of things. I mean, it's, it's very, very elaborate. But broadly, what I can explain to you is that SEBI has given broad definition of uh, AIFs. Within those definitions, fund manager prepares the, the PPM. The PPM is then reviewed by the regulator subject to over, overall guidelines. The approval is given or clarification is sought or rejection is given. Right. So uh, it's as regulated as any other product. The only difference between mutual funds versus AIF is that uh, there is a greater flexibility, freedom given to the fund manager as compared to mutual funds. Reason being that mutual fund is a mass retail product. So even a uh, hundred rupee SIP investor comes. So the way regulations have to be drafted is very different for mutual funds. And because there are rich investors coming in AIF, there is a lot more room to create a very differentiated kind of a product, thematic product, listed, unlisted, venture, all of these things. Now you said that to float a AIF fund, you need a, uh, the regulator's permission. But once the fund is floated, is there a filing that has to be done at regular intervals of time, utilization of fund, how it is growing? Is there a regulatory supervision post the launching of the fund? Yes, many regulations are there. So again, like I said, everything is defined in the PPM. Now, unlike a mutual fund where you have to decide what amount you are investing and everything gets invested at uh, one stage in an AIF, you can actually stagger off uh, clients' investments over a period of time. Now, though, period of time is also defined, right? Uh, so let's say minimum one crore uh, can be called over a period of time. So initially you take 20%. So you commit, the investor will commit X amount, X percentage of that commitment amount has to be taken up front. And then, uh, you know, as the investment opportunities come, fund managers will call for the money. So that is something very, very different. You know, rather than investors trying to time their uh, allocations, here the fund manager is trying to time the allocation basis the opportunity which comes up from. Right. There are there are opportunities in, uh, let's say, especially category three, where you can do systematic investment plan also. But broadly, what the regulator has defined that from the time you launch your product within the first month, you have to do the first close. And from the first close is where your tenure ends. So if it is a five year fund, right, I do my first uh, fundraise of, let's say, uh, whatever amount, 100 crores or so. I do my first close. The moment you do the first close, the five year tenure is calculated from that date when the fund is launched. From the date of the launch, you have 12 months to raise whatever you want to raise. So after 12 months, you cannot raise any further money. The fund has to close for subscriptions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, they have given uh, flexibility for you to extend your life of the fund by two, two more years, nothing more than that. So let's say it's a five-year fund, max you can go plus one, plus two. But after seven years, it has to close under any category. So like that, they have defined that how you will call for the money, how much you can call for the money, in how much time you have to close the fund. After the fund has matured, how much extension you can take. To take the extension, you need to go in for the voting. Uh, only if you have 75% uh, of the AUM where the approval has come, only then the fund can be extended. So many, many uh, softer regulations are inbuilt in for uh, be better clarity between investor and investment manager. And as I said, overall, uh, protecting the interest and the rights of the investor. Mr. Chaturvedi, you mentioned alternative investment fund as a very broad category. It does not define equity, debt or uh, something of particular asset class. For the ease of understanding of these products, can you please tell me what all the things which can come under uh, the category of EIF? Uh, can you describe the broad uh, universe into which you invest your money or where you cannot invest. Can you please uh, throw some light around that? So like I explained, let me go in reverse category. What we do is category three. So let me explain category three. Now AIF category three is where regulator allows you to do two kinds of products. One is a plain vanilla investing into only listed equities. Companies which are listed in the markets, liquidity is available to you 24 or by every day. Okay. Now, in that they've given you flexibility that while you are allowed to create a listed fund, if you feel or if the fund manager feels up to 49%, they can also buy unlisted, which we define in the PPM on day one. Mm. So within the category, which is essentially for listed uh, investing, listed equities investing, you have the provision to go up to 49% in unlisted. Whether you want to use or not use is decided by the investment manager on day one while taking approval. So that's the simplest thing. In, in category three, mostly you will find listed equities. 
just like any other mutual fund. The difference between mutual fund and AIF category three is only that mutual funds are more tightly regulated in terms of how much you can buy a particular sector, particular stock, reporting structures, X, Y, Z, because there are a lot of retail investors there. In an AIF, you can create boutique thematic products with different options to call for your money at regular intervals, uh, close and style. So the products will be very, very different while in the same category of listed equities. Okay. The second, second option in the category three is a long shot. Now, long shot is a complex product. It's, it's not for everybody. Right now, there are different kind of long short funds. I mean, uh, long short funds are essentially uh, where you use complex derivatives to either beat Nifty, meet the Nifty, or try to position uh, the product in a way that you are trying to beat the fixed income return. So, right. So now this is where the complexity comes. But this is a very popular category in the uh, HNIs and the super HNI category. So one has to understand the, how the product is defined, how uh, the long and the short end or how the long only portfolio will be created and how derivatives will be used, whether it is futures, whether it is options. So once that is created, investors understand what is the target of that product. Like I said, is it trying to beat equity returns or or uh, beat the debt somewhere between debt and equity returns? Uh, the product will change accordingly. So that's category three, listed and long short. Listed with no derivatives and long shots with derivatives. So that's category three. Come to category two. Here, fund managers have to invest in unlisted equities of the company. Unlisted. Companies which are not in public markets. Companies are in, let's say, mid-stage, late stage of growth. And they are seeking for money to grow their business. So that's called growth capital, right? Uh, so there, again, the flexibility is given that up to 49% you can go listed. Like in category three, it was 49% unlisted. Here, investment managers have to be necessarily zero to hundred percent unlisted and zero to forty nine percent listed. If they want to utilize, they can utilize. If they don't want, only private equity companies. The second part over here is real estate. So you have funds if you want to participate in the Indian real estate sector, whether it is uh, participating through underlying real estate equities or underlying real estate uh, uh, fixed income kind of style of investing. Then there are products which are designed uh, to generate returns from real estate as a asset class. The third category of products you can make here is uh, fixed income debt. So now you would know, Mr. Bhatt, that in mutual funds, debt is managed very, very with a lot of precaution and safety because retail investors involved, uh, the fund manager will uh, want to avoid any kind of default risk, essentially default risk and liquidity risk. So therefore, mutual fund portfolios are created uh, only in top end or high end securities so that the money can be safe. It doesn't matter if the returns are slightly low. But in category 2 AIF, there is no definition. The managers are upfront saying that we will take higher risk. We will buy securities which are uh, grade one below or triple A or two grade below triple A and try to give you high returns. So, so those are called the credit funds, the private credit funds. So they will generate higher returns by taking higher risk, which is upfronted told to the investors. Another category in this is, uh, so this is about uh, the uh, debt markets. I spoke about private equity. I spoke about real estate. You can also do infrastructure funds here. Road companies, port companies, bridges, you know, uh, you can create a fund where you give capital to these infrastructure companies and whatever annuity or whatever uh, toll collections or uh, regular collections are coming from that project is then given back to the investors. So this is another way of playing fixed income market. So now traditionally fixed income market was fixed deposit, commercial deposit and commercial papers. In category two, you can participate into a fixed, fixed income market through real estate underlying, through uh, CP, CDs underlying, essentially CPs and NCDs, or you can also get into infrastructure projects. So now what happens is you get an opportunity to invest in Indian infrastructure, Indian real estate, Indian private markets, uh, private equity, listed equity, long short. Also category one is allowing you to buy into early stage companies where the companies are very, very small. The companies, I mean, a lot, lot of startups, one year into operation, small revenues, no profits, but the business idea is good. So depending on investors risk appetite, you can invest anywhere from early stage to listed stage, from real estate to infrastructure, everything is available through this license, which is under alternate investment fund. So I hope I've tried to, in a very simple way, you know, try to explain that what are the possibilities and how you can diversify yeah. from 
plain vanilla products into different asset classes using AIF as a platform. My simple question is, we, the investors are spoiled for a choice today. From equities to mutual funds to stocks to PMS, the different uh, fixed income instrument. Why should they touch AIF in the first place? Is that just because somebody is itchy to put his money there or it creates a very high level of return potential? Of course, it might come along with a certain amount of risk. What's the unique selling proposition uh, for AI? So, like I said, uh, my last uh, point in the previous question was that uh, AI offer you the benefit of diversification into multiple asset classes, which as individuals, you might find difficult. I mean, as an individual, I cannot buy the Bandra Valley Sea Link uh, project, right? As an individual, yes. I cannot buy a road project. But if I want to participate in the growth story of the Indian infrastructure sector, then you have to participate through uh, the AI. And by putting only one crore rupees, I get to participate in the India growth story or I want to participate in the India's, India's uh, logistic space. So that opportunity is available through category three, but otherwise it is not available to you. If you want to make higher returns in uh, by investing in Indian corporates, uh, mid-sized corporates who are doing well and have potential to become big and I can get, get higher returns, then that option is available, which is not available in mutual funds. If you want to buy unlisted companies, you can you go to promoter and say, give me give me equity worth one crore rupees. So first, identifying which company to put money, then putting in lower, smaller denominations. These are opportunities to invest in sectors or uh, asset classes, which was never available, is now available through AI. So number one benefit is diversification benefit. Number two is you get fractional ownership of the underlying assets. Third is, is that all these uh, sophisticated, I keep repeating the word sophisticated, complex, is now available through a institutionalized structure managed by uh, professionals, fund managers and well regulated by the regulator. So there is a diversification benefit uh, and uh, rich investors also have the appetite of or are interested. See, returns may not be the only parameter to look at new avenues of investing. They might have a lot of Indian equities, they might have a lot of mutual funds and all these kind of things but now they want something different so there is where this these products come into play and of course these products are designed in a way that you can you tend to perform better than the 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 generic investments which are already uh, available in the industry underlying thought is to get that uh, risk reward ratio in uh, the favor of the investors so all in all it is fair to say that there is a creamy layer in the society and there are very, uh, you know, good investing opportunities which cannot be put under the general investment categories like a mutual fund which is available for general public for the reason that it could be of not of that size or because of a particular risky nature. Uh, but it has a potential to give a very high returns and that these will be pulled under the AIF category. That's how I, I look at this. Yes, you're right. Uh, just the fact that uh, high returns uh, or low returns, I mean, uh, that is, those are outcomes, uh, you know, uh, uh, there is no guarantee of underlying returns. High, low versus what? What is the definition of high return, low return? So returns is uh, secondary, I would say. And how much returns will be generated will be function of what kind of product you are creating and what, what is the benchmark or reference point for, for that return. Uh, but my main uh, uh, point would be that it definitely allows you to diversify your portfolio into asset classes which uh, are generally not available to normal investors. So I would I would say that that should be the first parameter. Now, one question that uh, comes to my mind is uh, the AIFs are these open ended funds, these are close ended funds or if an investor wants an exit in between, he invested money. And suddenly he realizes that he need a recourse for this money. Can he exit this? Is there an option in this? Or it's a closed box and you invest your money and open it only on the uh, the last day uh, when the fund becomes liquid. How does it, the system work? See, in category one and category two, uh, because of the nature of the products, uh, these are closed-ended products with a very long gestation period. So typically the, these would be 10 years, 15 years even 20 year products, it could be, but generally I've seen that 10 to 12 years is uh, the kind of tenure of the product. In category one, category two, because of the, uh, uh, like I said, underlying securities, which are unlisted or real estate, uh, where the money comes back only after a period of time. So uh, in between, if there, uh, it's not allowed to exit in between, at least the fund manager cannot take back the units. The only way you can exit out if there is a need of money is that you have to search for a buyer in the secondary market, right? So you can actually transfer the units from one buyer to other buyer, other buyer at a defined price. 
and that's how you get your exit essentially in the category one and category two in category three because of uh, underlying securities being listed in nature the liquidity is available different managers different products will have different ways of giving liquidity uh, some could have a hard lock in of one year or two years or three years depending on the nature of the product but in category three liquidity is is available and category one and category two it is uh, very illiquid very illiquid in nature uh, what are the key risks uh, we have to be cognizant of when somebody invests into uh, ai the risk will be associated with the kind of product right so if you are investing in venture capital or new businesses obviously you know the uh, the error rates could be far higher so there is always a risk of losing money and uh, the higher the risk you are taking higher is the risk of actually losing money but equally obviously uh, the risk reward ratio also could work in uh, uh, in a different order that way so i would say that category 1 category 2 was a bit more risky illiquid illiquid because there are underlying risk which are taken if you're buying a unlisted business if you buy in a fund 15 businesses uh, 3 or 4 5 businesses can actually become zero 3 or 4 5 businesses may not make any money and maybe 2 3 become multi baggers so your average return obviously will be function of whatever happens within the fund over 10 year cycle in a real estate there is a default risk in private markets there is a default risk in uh, infrastructure projects again there is a default risk or the project going bad or the money not coming back so risk is that you lose your uh, capital permanently in public markets uh, in category 3 little less risky compared to category 1 and 2 because you are in listed markets you have better liquidity available so market fluctuation based risk always there but at least you can time and you can take your money off the table so it is i mean as i said and i'm again reiterating that uh, the products are complex the products are structured uh, the product have uh, liquidity risk the products are inherently taking risk when they are investing in businesses especially in category 1 2 uh, and uh, any kind of events in the market global markets local markets can have a impact on the capital and the overall returns in this so definitely i mean safest is mutual fund only how big is this industry uh, is it something very new is it in its infancy uh, compared to a mutual fund industry how big is eif industry eif industry has grown uh, it's growing faster than mutual fund industry but that's also the base effect but now uh, as we speak it's uh, over 10 lakh crores of industry so since 2012 2012 is where eif as a category came into birth so from 2012 we are in 2023 about 11 years 11 years uh, from zero we have reached uh, i think 10 10 10 and a half lakh crores kind of uh, overall aum uh, within which category 2 which is uh, private equity and real estate and private capital market that is the biggest category so about 8 lakh crores is in category 2 only then there is about a lakh crore in category 3 and uh, remaining is in category 1 so this is growing at a very very fast pace very fast pace uh, at motilal oswal which you represent what are the works that you have done in ai uh, if somebody is interested to invest in ai uh, what kind of products you have what has been the experience of it uh, how many funds you run can you take us through a bit of statistics so we have many businesses within a motilal oswal group i am part of the motilal oswal asset management company and we are operating in category 3 we are investing money into listed markets or uh, public markets we do a uh, long only uh, listed equity investing uh, we started launching our products in 2016 we have been the early ones and we are the largest in this category our aum is now 10000 crores and uh, that would be about 10% market share we are number one in the aum uh, in the category 3 itself at this stage we have about uh, 13 live portfolios we have successfully closed uh, multiple strategies and we have refunded back 5000 crores with the uh, satisfactory performance and those clients have given us the money back again but uh, all this put together in the last uh, 2016 so for 7 years of track record raising money returning money and at this stage we are having live portfolios of uh, live 13 portfolios and we are getting a very good response in this uh, in this category 3 my sister company which is into the private equity so we have a separate private equity and a separate real estate firm which is called mo motilal oswal alternates uh, there again we are running a very successful franchise in category 2 which is uh, private equity we have uh, four funds in private equity overall about a billion dollars uh, of aum there we have successfully closed our uh, one fund out there uh, and return money back uh, at 27% gross irr uh, and three funds are live so that's the private equity unlisted side of investing we also have a large practice of real estate we are 
ongoing raising uh, money in our sixth real estate fund again we have not encountered any default risk and we are uh, we are having many successful investors that book is about uh, 1.2 1.3 billion dollars there about so 10th so that's a 2 billion dollar practice where we do category 2 uh, private equity and real estate investing my business motilal usual amc is doing category 3 uh, listed business if you add all of these together then uh, we are overall managing 25000 crores plus plus congratulations on these uh, big numbers and i only wish that you continue to grow and uh, give the benefits to the investors uh, my next so question is somebody gets impressed with this thoughts and says i want to invest in alternate investment fund in your opinion please tell me who should or who should not invest in aif what's the checklist that they have to go through before they commit their money into any aif fund whether it's motilal oswal or somebody else uh, can you take us through a step by step process i think first thing one needs to keep in mind is that uh, in these kind of products uh, i mean i'm giving you a very laymanish kind of thought process which can be a starting point and this is my personal opinion one can have different opinion so it's only my personal opinion i would say that uh, in aifs uh, broadly you should not allocate over 20 30% of your overall uh, net worth or overall uh, investable surplus i mean net worth minus real estate whatever money you are putting in equities and fixed income and all that stuff you know in that uh, if you restrict your investments to the tune of 20 25% you have done the risk management side uh, to begin with then number 2 is uh, of course you have to think through that where do you see the opportunities are lying i mean do you see opportunities in the unlisted space in the private equity space in the uh, real estate space in the public market space do you like the themes so deciding where you want to invest is the second part third part is looking at the track record of the fund manager so the track record of the fund manager will give you the confidence that how the same manager has managed money in the last 3 years 5 years 10 years 15 years 20 years longer the track record in managing the same asset class the better it is is he expert is the fund manager expert of equities unlisted equities private debt space infrastructure space venture capital space so you need to buy the expert of that underlying uh, asset class so that's a third because you're giving money to this person and the person has to do a good job for you so i think uh, uh, these three or four things one need to keep and fourth uh, last but not the least always advisable to consult your financial advisors uh your your any professionals if it is a chartered accountant to understand the product to understand taxation to understand liquidity to understand uh, penalties exit loads all of these finer terms and terms and conditions uh, which are mentioned in the ppm uh, you need to have a thorough legal understanding of the structure taxation understanding product understanding and so on and so forth so always better to come through uh, advisors uh professionals who who are experts and who can talk to manufacturers fund managers and uh more explicitly explain to the investor all the risk so which only means to say that i'm not sure whether this product is available online or not but you are stressing the point here is that this is one case where advisors have a great role because these are funds with uh, enormous potential to get a higher return but the returns will also come with risk there are uh, points that have to be uh, taken into consideration like repatriation of funds taxation of funds where the monies are going how does the economy look like uh, probably uh, the a choice has to be made between different available aif funds at any point of time somebody invest so the role of advisor is more stressed here than anywhere else probably am i right uh, mr chaturvedi absolutely absolutely because so number one we cannot market this product online like i said these are privately placed uh, products these have to be uh, explained in person in detail and only then so it's a one on one understanding between the investor and the investment manager and also so you just cannot go on the website and you know buy the product one two three click because these are uh, the complexity is high Uh, the you know and uh, there are various aspects you have to keep in mind so following the advisor who can study the risk uh, study all the important elements of the product uh, you know uh, and explain that will give you uh, give this investor a lot more comfort so i mean i have seen that broadly most of the fundraise we have done 99.99% is all uh, coming through intermediaries
Uh, Mr. Chaturvedi, thank you very much for these inputs. A final word from you. Somebody wants to still invest in AIF. Give me two or three points he must look into, focus, or get right answers on, uh, which is a must. Uh, can you briefly say that? So I'll just kind of summarize what I'm saying. I'm saying that uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, India as a market is evolving. Indian investors and uh, Indian uh, non-resident investors are all evolving uh, as the country is growing. Uh, and now we have grown to, you know, cross the 4 trillion mark. This obviously has uh, created a huge opportunity uh, to participate in the India growth story through the capital markets and uh, uh, within the capital markets, so whether it is, uh, you know, equities, debt markets, many other asset classes are now opening up uh, for uh, public to invest and participate in the India growth story. But now different products have to be uh, bought through uh, different regulatory structures. So, uh, you know, coming through mutual funds for plain vanilla, safe and sound, uh, the most liquid tax friendly uh, uh, is the best option to start with as you go ahead in your investing career with the experience with uh, you know as you build your net worth you have more investing surplus in hand you have the risk appetite to invest 10 20 30 percent in other asset classes as compared to uh, regular mutual funds then you should start looking at alternate investment funds like i said in my whole talk that these AIFs are nothing but a regulated way, a nice regulated structure being given to fund managers to offer you multiple asset classes to participate in, uh, albeit with slightly higher risk and other, other things to be kept in mind. But you do get an opportunity to diversify your portfolio. And uh, there is a very good demand from investors, local investors. As I said, category two, which is unlisted, real estate, uh, private debt, it's a 8 lakh crore category. So 8 lakh crores is a very, very big uh, amount. Mutual funds have taken decades and decades to reach uh, 50 lakh crores. Okay. So I think this category is growing okay. at a very fast pace. Rich Indians are also growing at a very fast pace. And as uh, rich Indians will grow, their risk appetite will also grow. Uh, they will want uh, a lot more unique, uh, differentiated products. And therefore, this category will always be in demand. I would recommend all, uh, all investors to be open. Consult your advisors. Understand the opportunity. If it suits your uh, overall thought process, your uh, risk frameworks, then uh, products are available. So uh, it's an exciting category. We are very excited. We are doing a lot of work here. My private equity company, my uh, our own asset management company, we feel this will be high growth for uh, many, many decades to come. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Akil Chaturvedi, for all these points about uh, alternate investment funds, how exciting it is, the risks which come with it, and every information that the prospective investors have to keep in mind. I, on behalf of NRI Money Clinic and on behalf of my audience, will remain are uh, indebted to you for your kindness to spare the time and uh, give all these points for the benefit of NRA community. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Bhatt, and wishing well to all your investors. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hope the video that I've done helped you to understand finer points of alternate investment funds. If it did help you to know the finer points of alternate investment funds and take an informed decision, please do like this video. Do not forget to share these videos with your near and dear ones, friends and relatives and on all the WhatsApp groups on which you are connected with. If you are a person who is watching my channel for the first time or if you are yet to subscribe for the channel, please do hit the subscribe button right now and press the bell icon. I shall be back with you. Thank you very much for watching this episode on NRI Money Clinic. I shall be back with you with another episode of Expert Speak next Tuesday. Till then, stay safe. Jai Bharat. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.